you, Andrew, for your uh, insight on this BPR. So, um, yeah, now, um, now we had uh, some uh, overview of the uh, BPR status. Um, so we are uh, going to see how we can uh, comply with the coming regulations, even if we don't have uh, any uh, uh, definitive levels, but uh, we'll see how we can uh, start with um, reviewing uh, plants and see where the uh, emissions are and how to uh, improve the, or limit the, the emissions of the plants. So the, the goal is uh, here to uh, have a logical approach uh, to set up a list of uh, all the uh, places in the plant where we might have uh, EO uh, emissions. And um, so we are, we are going to follow the um, EO, ethylene oxide, basically from the drums uh, where it's uh, taken from uh, to the patient and see where EO is released in the process. And of course, uh, once we have uh, uh, treated the uh, EO uh, emissions, it's very important to uh, have a feedback loop. So we'll see how it's possible to track the progress uh, in the plant with regard to EO emissions. Okay, so I just had, um, just before, I had a, a slide with a, a generic uh, layout of an ethylene oxide uh, sterilization plant. Okay, it's a very standard one with uh, preconditioning stabilization and aeration, plus a gas treatment system, uh, which is uh, here a catalytic uh, burner. So in, um, in this plant, we have uh, basically uh, primary sources of um, EO emissions uh, with the uh, process uh, main uh, exhaust, the, the stack of the plant. Okay. And this has an impact uh, on the environment and on the, the public around the plant. Uh, how to mitigate this uh, type of emission is by having, of course, a gas treatment system. So we'll see a bit later uh, what type of gas treatment systems are um, available for uh, EO. Then we have um, uh, secondary sources of uh, emission, like the exhaust of uh, the desorption cells. Um, and these also have, uh, like, the, like the main stack of the plant, have an impact also on the environment and uh, on the general public as well. So these also need to be treated uh, by a uh, gas treatment system or can be also treated by process improvements. So that's also an important point. Um, <clears throat> we are not only going to try to treat with the gas treatment system, but we can also improve the process to limit the EO emissions. Then we have the transfers of uh, pallets uh, between the um, sterilizer and the aeration cell, uh, which can also release EO in the atmosphere. These have mainly an impact on the users of the system, the operators, um, that may have to uh, move the pallets uh, between, the, uh, between the cells. And these can also be improved by process improvements and plant design. And then we have other sources like uh, leaks that happen uh, not on a normal, uh, uh, normal basis, but mainly in case of failure. Uh, these have also an impact on the users and the operators of the, of the machinery. Uh, and they have to be improved by different means, like plant design, ventilation, maintenance, and monitoring. And finally, the products going out of the, um, out of the, the plant that have, are going to be released, they also still uh, release uh, ethylene oxide through the residuals. And there is here an impact also on uh, the patient or the practitioners. Uh, and this can also be improved by the, the process improvements and the monitoring of EO emission. So the first, the primary sources of, um, of emission are um, quite well um, treated. It's quite easy to, uh, to capture the, the emissions, uh, the primary emissions of the, the vacuum pumps uh, and to treat them uh, through a, a catalytic or scrubber system. 
So there's a, basically the, the first uh, steps is to capture the EO flows uh, and for the indirect emissions to capture them by extraction fans. So these, these are very well-known um, uh, techniques uh, that are applied in, uh, in all plants. Then the plants can be improved by adding um, gas, tight, um, uh, gas tight walls, for example, or improving the connections between the sterilizer and the aeration cell. Um, this will, um, of course, this will um, uh, enable to keep the ethylene oxide in a confined space and by the use of, um, <clears throat> the use of uh, extraction fan to avoid this uh, ethylene oxide to be uh, released in the plant. It's also possible to create rooms that are slightly under uh, atmospheric pressure, also to avoid the, the release of uh, EO to, uh, to the outside. Then there's also the possibility to improve the, the process. So that's a, that's a point um, on which I think uh, many, uh, many manufacturers of medical devices or users of EO sterilizers can work to improve the, the process in order to uh, uh, reject less ETO to the outside. So here we have, uh, for example, the cycle chart of um, what we call the unicycle. Unicycle is also uh, known as uh, all-in-one cycle. So it's a sterilization cycle where all uh, stages, including preconditioning and aeration, are happening inside the sterilizer. So the, um, the aeration uh, part can be seen here. So all these, um, all these vacuum um, are uh, actually the, the stage of uh, aeration and help remove EO from the product uh, to avoid the use of uh, an aeration cell. So this, this process has a, a lot of advantages. So of course it will um, uh, remove the need for a transfer of pallets from the sterilizer to the aeration cell. So it means less contact uh, of the operators with the, uh, with the ethylene oxide. And it means less EO released uh, to, the, to the atmosphere. It also reduces the, the time um, or the, the work needing, needed for the, the operator, so it has a lot of advantages. Another advantage of this type of cycle is that all the uh, flows that are polluted with EO uh, are going through the vacuum pump and uh, they can be treated by a simple uh, scrubber, acid scrubber, for example. Uh, we'll see that a bit later, but an acid scrubber is... Uh, it's good uh, to treat low flows uh, with higher concentrations. So the, the effluents of this cycle can be completely treated by an acid scrubber, uh, which is a, a very simple type of uh, a gas treatment system. After improving the process, uh, of course, there is still ethylene oxide to, uh, to remove. So basically, there are two um, major types of um, gas treatment systems. One is the uh, catalytic abator, as you can see here behind me, one uh, picture of a catalytic abator. Uh, these uh, machines are highly efficient to treat ethylene oxide. Uh, they can uh, ensure a purification down to less than a ppm. Um, and uh, they, they can treat also quite high flows. So we are talking thousands of uh, cubic uh, meters. Uh, treated by these uh, systems, and they can treat so they, they can treat the uh, the flows coming from aeration cells, for example, um, or sometimes uh, extraction fans as well. So they, they can treat really 100% of the process uh, emissions. One of the difficulties with these machines is that they are quite expensive. So there's a capital cost uh, here, um, and they can have high running costs if the quantity of ETO to treat is not uh, enough. So they, they would uh, then uh, start to uh, consume a lot of energy. Another type of gas treatment system, the scrubber, acid scrubber. Mm, acid scrubber can be uh, extremely efficient uh, and they, they can remove ETO in flows and reach less than a ppm as well, um, concentration to the outlet. Uh, we have here a picture of um, a three-column scrubber. Um, 
These uh, systems are less costly than the catalytic abaters, um, but they are only efficient with um, um, highly concentrated uh, flows, or at least low, um, low air flows. Okay, so we are talking here more like hundreds of cubic meters, and with uh, catalytic burners, we are more in the thousands of cubic meters. They are perfectly adapted for the unicycle uh, because all the, the flows from the unicycle um, are going through the vacuum pump, so low flow, uh, a few hundreds of cubic meters per hour, and uh, so the scrubber are perfectly adapted for this kind of uh, process. So it's a lower capital cost, uh, it's energy efficient, you can stop and start your scrubber uh, very quickly, it does not consume uh, much energy, or only for the, the running pumps. Yeah, that's uh, basically the two major uh, type of uh, gas treatment system that are used in ethane oxide sterilization. There are other types of gas treatment systems, but uh, they are not really uh, seen uh, in EO sterilization. And the last possibility to uh, improve um, uh, the, the process and reduce the uh, EO emissions is, of course, to reduce the usage of EO. So um, that's probably the first step that can be, can be taken, is to try to use less ethylene oxide in the, in the cycle. Um, very often, um, uh, users of ethylene oxide uh, sterilizers start with the uh, half-cycle approach, uh, the overkill uh, approach for half-cycles. And so we know that this approach is, um, as the name says, an overkill. It's uh, basically designed to kill uh, a million of bugs on a, on a device that probably has only a few thousands. So it's uh, an overkill approach. And the ISO 11135 uh, uh, clearly uh, uh, opens another uh, road to this traditional approach, which is a more integrated approach, where uh, by knowing the, um, uh, the bio-burden, the real bio-burden on the, on the medical devices, by knowing its, its nature and knowing its um, numbers, um, the user can um, use less ETO, lower concentrations, less contact time, and, um, and then reduce the consumption of ethylene oxide. So this is, a, this is an approach that we recommend uh, to, uh, to limit the quantity of ETO and have a better control on the, uh, on the levels of EO in the products. It, of course, requires a very high uh, knowledge uh, on, uh, of the product uh, experience uh, and uh, being able to prove that all along the year, uh, the bio burden of the, the product is, uh, is stable or is in known limits uh, that have been validated through the uh, validation process of the cycle. Uh, so that was the slide for uh, reducing the uh, ethylene oxide uh, consumption. Uh, with a nice chart here of um, uh, absorption, where we have the, the, black, uh, the black curve that is the pressure in the chamber. So we see that we have a very high EO absorption uh, in, this, uh, in this cycle. And of course, if we put less ETO, there will be also less EO absorbed in the, in the product. And uh, the integrated approach, where by the knowledge of the um, uh, bio burden and uh, in nature and in numbers, uh, we can also reduce the usage of ETO. So uh, the last step is to track uh, the progress, um, the progress of uh, the usage of EO. By this, there, there has been a lot of uh, developments in the recent years on the EO measurement. A lot of progress in the, in the range of um, uh, measurements from pure ETO to very low uh, concentrations. Um, and by combining these um, improvements with, um, uh, with a lot of developments also in computer capacity, uh, we can also uh, uh, develop tools uh, to make reporting and to track the, uh, the progress in the use of EO and the progress in removing or lowering the, uh, uh, the leaks and the EO emissions. Then, of course, uh, one needs to react when there is a detection done. So there's also a lot here to do to, uh, to put in place um, uh, procedures to react when a leak is detected. 
with alarms, uh, automated extraction fans, and so on. And uh, Salt2 is very proud of um, working in this field, um, working with users, working with, with institutions to uh, help uh, put on the market devices that uh, really improve the measurement of EO. So we have here on, on the left side uh, the uh, CRDS technology that uh, our friend uh, Rudger will uh, uh, explain uh, how, how it works. Uh, so this device is to measure very low concentration of EO. We're talking about PPTs. And on the left side, uh, at the opposite uh, side of the scale, uh, device to measure high concentration of ETO right inside the chamber uh, that can uh, help for uh, parametric release, for example, for direct uh, in sterilizer measurements. <clears throat> yeah, basically that's where we are. Uh, very happy to contribute to putting these devices on the market. And I will now uh, let uh, the, uh, the stage to uh, Rutger from Picaro to talk about the CRDS technology. Thank you.